Here are the strangest cultural beliefs from all around the world. Number seven, Mubobobo. Mubobobo is believed to be a kind of uh, black magic where a man can supposedly have sex with a woman from a distance and without her consent. What kind of crazy talk is this? I mean, this just sounds like something anyone can imagine in their head. The belief and supposed practice of Mubobobo is common in Zimbabwe. It's thought to have originated from neighboring countries such as South Africa, Mozambique, and Malawi. Some believe that the practice is especially common in rural areas. Mubobo refers to a magical remote sex metaphorically called Bluetooth sex as it generally connects perpetrator and victim within an eye shot distance or even beyond. It refers to magic in engaging in sex without consent and physical contact. Are you guys following this? Because I'm not at all. Apparently, participants can't lose their virginity or contact HIV because there's no physical contact. Well, no sh**. Who are these people that practice this and how does it go? Well, there are a variety of reasons why Mabobo magic is practiced. For instance, some participants pointed out that since the majority of those that use Mabobo are usually elderly men who are single or divorced, this explains why they would resort to this sort of uh, magic. Sounds like the same case for people they want to be with. Like many other concepts of magic, Mabobo is dismissed by the scientific community and anyone with half a brain. Scientists say that it's just an example of induced hysteria and hallucination. While the general population in countries like Zimbabwe may believe in Mabobo, official institutions are wary of including a faith in magic into their laws and procedures as they should be. I'm wondering exactly how people look when they're engaged in Mabobo. Number six, the number 39. Everyone knows about the number 13. It's lucky for some people, but for most people, it's an unlucky number. But let's forget the unlucky number 13 for a second. In Afghanistan, 39 is the real problem. In certain parts of Afghanistan, the number 39 is viewed as cursed or a badge of shame as it's supposedly linked with prostitution. The number 39 began when the number was associated with a pimp who was allegedly living in the western city of Herat. Yeah, sounds crazy, but this is a true story. This pimp was nicknamed 39 after the registration plate of his expensive car and the number of his apartment. The number is said to translate into Mordegal, which literally means dead cow. But it's also a well-known slang term for a pimp. The number has gotten so unpopular that apartments and cars with license plates with the number are supposedly virtually unsellable in the capital of Kabul. It even goes as far as some 39-year-old Afghans who would rather refer to themselves as being one less than 40 or one year to 40, or some other variation. Afghan government officials and numerologists have tried to dispel the superstitions on the number 39, but they've had little success. Number five, can't say the unlucky name. Carlos Menem is an Argentine politician who was president of Argentina from 1989 to 1999. However, there's a weird belief around that saying his name out loud, or worse, coming into physical contact with him, can bring down sports teams, put people in the hospital, or even bring death. According to legend, Menem has a clear track record of suffering seriously bad luck, and many believe he brings those around him into his apparent curse. Not only is Menem ill-remembered by many for the perception that he brought on Argentina's 2001 economic crisis, he's also associated with leaving actual death in his wake. Some of the crazy examples include the death of two new politicians who died in accidents mere days after they accepted their positions back in 1989. Another example is the 1990 World Cup. Menem attended the game in Milan and attempted to shake hands with goalie Neri Pampito. Not being able to reach his hand, Menem patted his knee instead. Soon after, Menem touched his knee. Pompito broke his kneecap, debilitating him for the rest of the game. Hmm, yeah, I can see why this curse got steam. Another example is Menem's visit with popular tango singer Hugo del Carril in 1989, who was sick but slowly recovering from his sickness. Apparently, the guy suddenly died shortly after Menem's visit. The same thing happened to composer Astor Piazzolla, 
who had the same fate after a visit in the hospital from Menem just a few years later. Menem's supposed bad luck affects his own life too. He garnered public scandal for his unhappy marriage, and in 1995, his son passed away in an accident while flying a helicopter. Unfortunately, even Menem himself is convinced that a curse weighs on him. Hey, how do you guys feel about this? Number four. The number four. In Chinese culture, whether a number is considered lucky or not depends on whether the number's name sounds similar to other words with positive or negative meanings or connotations. With respect to the number four, the reason for the common phobia with the number across Asia is that the word for the number four sounds similar to the word for death. There's even a name for this thing, tetraphobia, which is the practice of avoiding instances of the number four. The Chinese avoid phone numbers and addresses with fours, especially when they're combined with another number that changes the meaning. For example, the number 94 could be interpreted as being dead for a long time because the number nine sounds the same as the word for a long time. In Mandarin-speaking regions of China, 14 and 74 are considered more unlucky than the individual number four, since 14 sounds like the phrase wants is going to die, and the number 74 sounds like the phrase will certainly die or will die in anger. When Beijing lost its bid to stage the 2000 Olympic Games, it was speculated that the reason China didn't pursue a bid for the following 2004 games was because of the unpopularity of the number four in China. Instead, the city waited another four years and eventually hosted the 2008 Olympic Games, which was even better than the 2000 Olympic Games because the number eight is considered a very lucky number in Chinese culture. Number three, lucky drawings. In the tiny Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan, there's a unique tradition of painting dicks on architecture. This is actually something that's been encouraged and persisted for over 500 years. Phallus paintings of their origins in the Chimi Lakang Monastery near Punaka, the former capital of Bhutan. The village monastery was built in honor of Lama Drukpa Kunli, who lived in the 15th to 16th century, and it was popularly known as the Mad Saint for his clearly unorthodox way of teaching. These explicit paintings can be seen painted on the walls of houses and buildings throughout Bhutan, particularly in villages, and are credited as Kunli's creations. Traditionally, symbols of a dick in Bhutan have been intended to drive away the evil eye and malicious gossip. The belief that such a symbol brings good luck and drives away evil spirits is so much ingrained in the psyche of the common populace in Bhutan that the symbols are routinely painted outside walls of the new houses and even painted on license plates. Some have ribbons tied around them like presents. Others are coiled by daunting dragons. Few even have eyes. Carved wooden dicks are hung outside of new homes at the corners. I'm beginning to think that this mad saint was a huge troll back in the day. Number two, tearful cutting. As ridiculous as this sounds, in some cultures, amputation is believed to be an appropriate form of mourning. This is especially true of the Dani tribe from Papua, Indonesia, where members of this tribe cut off their fingertips as a way of displaying their grief. This is just a huge what the f to me. Most of the time, it's the women that participate in a ceremony like this. The religious beliefs of the tribe prompted this sort of ritual, so every time that a woman in the Dani tribe loses a loved one in her life, there's another ceremony to remove a segment of one of her fingers. If the deceased person was considered to be powerful, it's believed that their spirits would contain equal power too. Some may choose to remove the tips of their fingers without any actual cutting. Some people chew at their knuckles to weaken them and then tie a rope around the finger to cut off the circulation. Others avoid the chewing part and just tie up their joints to stop the blood flow. In either case, the muscle and nerves die of oxygen deprivation and apparently the deceased portion of the finger just pops off. Ugh. Even though this is a harsh tradition, the Dani have a philosophy. Each finger of the hand is related to life, universe, and each other. The fingers of a person's hand are distinct and unique, but they all must work together to reach a goal, like picking something up, like people in a community, if one of the fingers is hurt, it will reduce the potential of all others. They use this philosophy to explain their willingness to sacrifice their fingers. Their physical loss is a link to the universe and family and friends who have gone before them. 
All I gotta say is, it's a double whammy to lose a bunch of family members in a plane crash or something. Number one, mutant superpowers. Albinism is a rare inherited condition that affects approximately one in 20,000 people. However, albinism is a much more common occurrence in sub-Saharan Africa and in Tanzania, where albinism occurs one in every 1,429 births, a much higher rate than in any other nation. However, there's a crazy belief in these areas that people with albinism possess special powers. Such superstition is especially popular in Tanzania and Malawi, and so far, it's been exploited by witch doctors and others who use albino body parts as ingredients in rituals and potions with the claim that their magic will bring prosperity to the user. These ideas have been around for many generations, with witch doctors promising success and power after drinking a potion with some albino hair or actual limbs inside. How did this belief ever start? The strange belief goes even as far as some people believing that having sex with an albino cures AIDS, a belief which often leads to rapes, even against children. On the other side of the coin, many also believe albinism is a punishment from God or bad luck, and that it could be contagious. Fathers often suspect the mother of the albino child of infidelity with a white man or that the child is the ghost of European colonists. An albino child is often seen as a bad omen and treated as unwanted. Many albino babies become victims of infanticide because of these superstitious views. After 2015, when Tanzania enacted tougher steps against violence against albinos, Malawi has seen a steep rise in killings with 18 reported killings since November 2014. However, the likely toll is probably higher because of missing persons and unreported murders. Here's what's next. Papua New Guinea remains one of the most unexplored countries in the world. Its dense forests and mountainous terrain seems to discourage explorers from venturing too far into it. With that in mind, there are an estimated 44 uncontacted indigenous tribes living in the country, though aside from knowing they exist,